Okay, so today we're going to do a demo of the uh, internationalization or uh, multilingual feature uh, that we've added to Spotlight 2.0 recently. Um, and since this feature um, that we've added to Spotlight was a pretty substantial feature and required a fair amount of work, um, I thought I'd start off with some context uh, to make really clear what the motivation for this feature was and and sort of what all is involved in, in uh, making this feature available. So um, I'm currently showing the Spotlight at Stanford uh, landing page. Um, and at Stanford Libraries, we currently have more than 60 published Spotlight exhibits. Um, and as you can see here, looking at some of the titles of, of some of the exhibits, um, we, many of these exhibits feature content and topics that are likely to be of interest to people whose primary language um, is uh, not English. So for example, uh, the curator of this exhibit, uh, Mario Pacci, an Italian maestro in China, uh, felt it was important enough that that exhibit be accessible um, to Chinese speakers that he included both uh, Chinese and English in the feature pages of the exhibit well before we started developing uh, the multilingual feature. Uh, we're also working on a couple projects with um, uh, through grant grant funded projects um, that are going to require multilingual uh, exhibit sites. So for example, we're working with the Vatican Library on a project where we're going to need to make all the exhibits associated with that project available in both English and Italian. Uh, we're currently working on another project called Virtual Tribunals, where we expect the exhibit might need to be accessible in several languages other than English uh, to meet the needs of the stakeholders of that project. Uh, so we had a clear need for uh, multilingual exhibits at, at Stanford. Um, but we also believe that as Spotlight becomes more widely adopted and used, um, the capability of making exhibits multilingual be of value to other institutions. So we've developed this feature in Spotlight. So while I'm going to be showing uh, Stanford exhibits to demonstrate the feature, um, keep in mind that everything I'm going to show is available uh, right now in Spotlight 2.0. Uh, and I want to start um, in explaining how the multilingual feature works by starting in Blacklight. Um, because just as other features of Spotlight build on um, what Spotlight inherits from Blacklight, uh, the Spotlight multilingual feature um, gets some help from what's already in Blacklight. So this is the demo site uh, for uh, Blacklight. And as you can see up in the top bar here, uh, there's a locale switcher and English is the default, but you can see there's about nine other languages uh, than English that are available. Um, and if we select one, such as Chinese at the bottom, um, you can see that uh, just by changing locales, we see some translations, uh, Chinese translations show up. And so these are, uh, UI elements that are generic to any, presumed to be generic to any Blacklight based project. So the generic labels like um, the, uh, the search placeholder, uh, the search button label, if we do a search, we'll see some other translations, previous and next, um, limit your search uh, facet header, um, things like that. So those are already in, you know, exist in Blacklight today, uh, those uh, nine or 10 languages uh, with locale files that translate some of these common UI elements. You'll notice here though that the facet labels uh, on the sidebar and the metadata field labels are not translated. Um, and that's because these are very content specific and um, I don't think we can really consider them generic to any project because every project is going to have unique content and unique uh, metadata fields. Um, so those aren't uh, translated, which becomes uh, relevant to us uh, in a minute when we start talking about Spotlight. So now if we, we switch over to Spotlight, um, here's a very generic, um, this is not a published exhibit, it's just a, a, an exhibit um, our service team at Stanford uses. Um, 
But as an example of uh, a typical spotlight exhibit, um, we, uh, if I go up here and change from English uh, to another language, so I'm gonna do Spanish here, we'll see some of those uh, blacklight uh, translations since there is already a, a Spanish uh, locale file in blacklight. We'll see those translations come through. So we have the, the limit, your search uh, header for the facet sidebar, if we do a search, uh, we'll see some other uh, uh, translations such as the previous and next button. Um, however, there, there are two areas where just inheriting the blacklight translations are not sufficient for making a spotlight exhibit fully translate. So first, uh, Spotlight adds a number of features with associated UI labels that, uh, while they're applicable to all exhibits, uh, these elements don't exist in Blacklight and thus won't be translated in Spotlight. So for example, uh, one of the things we added in Spotlight was this browse feature where you can create browse categories. And this items label here, that's generic to anybody in, with any Spotlight exhibit who creates a browse category. You're gonna see however many items you have in that category in the word items. Uh, that's not part of Blacklight, so that's not translated even though we're inheriting the Spanish uh, locale file from Blacklight. Um, there are other examples of that throughout uh, Spotlight. So for example, in Spotlight on about pages, we added this context, uh, contacts. Uh, section, that header is specific to Spotlight. And so by default, it's not, it's not translated. So uh, to solve this problem, uh, the Spotlight community is gonna need to add language specific locale files, similar to the way uh, Blacklight has those nine locale files for languages other than English. Um, and we're gonna need to add those to the Spotlight repo. So Kathy and I um, have started on this uh, recently by getting Italian and Chinese translations uh, for the Spotlight specific UI elements. Um, and there are currently, there is a pull request with these. So there's here are the Italian uh, Spotlight specific UI label translations, and then here are the Chinese ones. So this PR is currently in limbo, but um, it should be, should be merged into the Spotlight repo um, uh, fairly soon, and then anybody in the community who wants to create an exhibit using this multilingual feature and wants to make either Italian or Chinese available um, will inherit these, these labels automatically. They don't have to do the work that Kathy and I did to um, get a translator to provide them. Um, so going forward, um, to take care of this, this issue for the other languages um, that aren't covered yet, because now we only have Italian uh, Chinese and uh, English in Spotlight. Um, we're hoping that the Spotlight community might need, might help out. And if anybody's ever creating an exhibit where they want to uh, offer another language, um, they can provide the equivalent uh, PR in that language for a locale file with these fields. And there's really not that many fields. It's less than 40 right now for uh, Spotlight specific UI elements. So that's one aspect of uh, fully translating an exhibit, a spotlight exhibit in another language. But the big focus of uh, most spotlight exhibits is of course the curatorial content. So this is all of the content that the exhibit curator um, is adding through uh, narratives such as creating the homepage and adding text, creating feature pages uh, with uh, all the text that becomes part of those pages, uh, creating the browse categories and giving those titles and sometimes descriptions, um, and the about pages, of course. And um, these menu, main menu items is another example where in Spotlight, we let the curator um, override those labels and provide any values they want. So these are all very exhibit specific and thus can't be solved through uh, those generic locale files that I showed a minute ago. So this is really what the multilingual feature in Spotlight is intended to support, uh, enabling exhibit curators to easily provide translations for all of their curatorial content in one or more languages, and then enable the curator 
uh, to offer their exhibit end users the option to view that exhibit in those languages. So um, to show how this, this part of the, the feature works, I'm gonna go back to just this generic uh, exhibit to start with. And I'm gonna go over to the ex um, exhibit administration section. And um, there's two places where you start working, uh, if you, as, an, as a curator, if you want to uh, make your exhibit multilingual, uh, there's sort of two areas where you work. And the first one is under configuration general where we've added a new tab, uh, tab called Languages. And um, I just to, make, to show the other thing I showed earlier, I um, added a couple of languages to the exhibit. I'm gonna remove them because we're not really using them. Just so you can see how uh, a brand new exhibit where you haven't uh, previously used the feature, um, how it will look. So you go to the general languages tab and we have the section here with a pull down of um, the languages that are available. Now this list is the list of languages for which Blacklight has locale files. So when I earlier showed you those, those um, the, the project Blacklight demo and, and showed you what locales were available in the pull down and top bar, these are those same languages. Uh, the reason for this is at Stanford, we decided that um, unless an exhibit uh, curator makes a special request and works with us directly, uh, we want to just offer them the ability to translate into languages where we know they are going to get for free the blacklight translations that exist. Um, so an individual institution could um, override this decision and probably and make their own um, decision if they wanted to add a new language. The, the issue there is you just have to deal with the fact that Blacklight won't have that locale file. And if you want your exhibit to be fully translated, you'll have to provide the equivalent uh, locale file to ideally to Blacklight so that everybody in the community can inherit that new uh, language locale file. Anyway, so um, I'm just going to show you, I'll pick, uh, I guess, Spanish again and add the language. So now I've added the language. By default, the language is not public, which means that um, even though now I see this locale switcher and I'll see the, um, the availability of Spanish here, um, end users don't see it. I only see it because I'm the uh, exhibit curator and um, so I see things the end users don't. Um, so the idea here is that until you make your translations, you don't wanna make that locale switcher public uh, because you don't have any, uh, your translations aren't ready yet. So uh, once I've added this language though, um, we get a new menu item here under the curation section uh, called translations. That's only shown once you have one or more languages uh, selected in your exhibit. And so this is a new page um, under creation and this um, has uh, five tabs. Um, there's a lot of information here. So it's broken down into these, these categories. Um, and th the first four of these work fairly similarly in that they're mostly pretty simple input fields. And what they do is just they're just organized uh, inputs uh, to sort of logically separate all the different parts of the exhibit that the curator will need to provide translations for in that language if they want the exhibit to be fully translated. So as you'll see, we just added one language, Spanish. So it's shown uh, up here. Um, I'm gonna back up real quick just to make this really clear how it works and add another language. So I'll add Albanian. And Albania is now shown here. So I have the option to work with that and make it public when I want. And now when I go to the languages page, you'll see that in addition to Spanish, there's also a tab here for Albanian. So the first step in working with translations, if you have more than one language, is to um, pick which language you want to provide the translations for at, the, at that time. So we're on Spanish right now. We have these five tabs. and um, these inputs uh, relate directly to things you'll see in the, the user will see in the UI. 
Um, I guess this is a good point to, to make clear, um, since I don't think I mentioned it yet, the, this uh, internationalization feature we've added to Spotlight 2.0 is only intended to provide translations for end user visible content. In other words, it doesn't attempt to uh, provide a way to provide translations for any of the stuff you see here in the exhibit administration feature. Um, that would be ideal, of course, but there are many, many fields and labels that would have to be translated. And the idea is um, it's much less important to provide other, the, the exhibit administration in other languages than it is the actual end user side of things. Okay, so um, in terms of working with the translation and providing the translations, it's pretty straightforward. Um, here we have this basic settings um, section. Um, in this case, this, this has to do with your exhibit title, subtitle, and description. In this case, this exhibit um, only has a title. We don't have a subtitle. So you'll see the title is here, and this is just showing us what's up here as a reminder. Um, and uh, the input is simply a place for you to put your, in this case, Spanish translation. So uh, main menu works similarly. These are our four main menu titles um, that are shown here. The, the label outside here is the sort of generic um, um, uh, field label that's used for that field. And the, what's shown here is your actual label because you can, even in English, you can override and call browse something else, for example. So if you've overridden that label, um, through the, the, the other, the general, pre the previous existing spotlight um, configuration uh, features, this would show you what you're currently calling browse in English, and then you provide the translation here. Um, so metadata labels, very similar. This just shows all your metadata fields and allows you to see what you're currently calling it in English and providing a translation in Spanish. Uh, search field labels work similarly. Um, these are the labels for the field-based search are the labels that you see in this menu here. Um, we go down, we have our facet fields. So these are all of the, um, the facet labels that I noted were not translated in, in Blacklight. This page gives you a, way, a place to actually provide language-specific translations for those facet labels. So end users will see the facets in that language. And then there's the browse categories, which is slightly different. Um, every browse category has a title. Um, so this is the English title. And then this is a place to put a, a Spanish translation for that title. Um, the description for browse categories is optional, but if you do have a English uh, description for a given browse category, um, you'll, be, you'll see it here. Uh, in case this one does, it says all items uh, in this exhibit. Um, and you can provide your translated um, string in this, in this field. Um, this probably is a good point to mention uh, the behavior if you don't provide a translation uh, for any of the fields I've shown so far um, in a language, but you do make that language public. Um, that's perfectly fine to do. So in other words, I could make this, this, I could go back to languages under general and click the public uh, checkbox for Spanish, make that available to my end users. Um, that will enable them to switch into uh, the Spanish locale as I'll show in a minute. Um, but any field that I have not, that I've just left empty will still show the default English value. So, um, I guess another way of saying this is you don't actually have to provide uh, for all the fields I've shown in these first four tabs. You don't have to provide a translation for every field if you don't want to. Um, it just means that that field will show up in English until you override it with an actual um, value in one of these fields. Um, and then finally, we have our fifth tab called pages. And so this is a little different um, because this is how we give the, the curator the ability to translate their feature pages. So the home pages, feature pages, and about pages. Um, and these are, uh, of course, much more complicated than simply filling in an input field because these the feature pages are all built with the, the widget framework, 
Widgets can vary quite a bit. Some widgets have text and some don't. Some are just images. Sometimes you have text and images and a caption. Um, and so there's lots of um, sort of additional complications with providing the translations for your feature pages. So this tab uh, basically gives you an overview of all of your feature pages that exist uh, in English. Uh, and that's, so this is the first column. Uh, these titles are probably a little confusing because it's our service team. So we just use names of people for the, the pages, but you know, realistically, these would be the titles that you give your feature pages. They show whether that page is published in English. And then this third column shows you the, the status in the, the language we're in. So again, we're currently in Spanish. So these, uh, this is the status of all these feature pages in Spanish. Um, by default, uh, the, there is one page that is created in Spanish by default, and that's the home page. Um, and the reason for this is because if, as I mentioned earlier, you choose to um, just make your locale uh, available to end users right away without providing any translations, that's possible. And since that is possible, and since an exhibit has to have a home page, um, we, we by default, as soon as you create a new language, we create a copy of the home page to use as the Spanish uh, home page so that the user in that locale is sure to get to the home page. Um, we have to have an existing home page in every locale is another way of saying it. Um, so uh, by default, um, you have the home page, but then any other pay feature page you can create whenever you want. If you don't, until you create it, the pages work a little different than the other fields. Until you create it, you will not, if you're in the Spanish locale in this case, you will not see these feature pages uh, while you're in Spanish. If you switch back to English, you'll see these pages. If you go to Spanish, you won't see any of these feature pages because they haven't been created yet. So this is a way for uh, exhibit curators to sort of control uh, the, curatorial, the, the main curatorial content for another language where Maybe not all pages will be translated in that language. Um, and the other aspect of it is, and I'll go ahead and just show you how you create one. You say create one now. So this example, if I'm ready to work on this feature page in Spanish, I do the, I create it. It's not published by default, so end users won't see it even if we make Spanish available. Um, and then I have these choices here, which you know the next step would be to edit it. And so when you edit it, it, um, it looks just like it does when you work with a page in English. Um, it shows you the current, this is a copy, we're starting with a copy of the English page. But now we're, we're working on the Spanish version and we just go through and work with the widgets the way we ordinarily would. Um, we just have to keep in mind that we're actually creating the Spanish version of the page at this point. So for example, I could go and just provide the Spanish translation uh, of the title here. And then I could go through every widget and provide the translations for this text, translation for the heading. And I would just go down and do that for all my exhibits and, and save the, the changes. Um, I'll just do some quick example here, just so I have something to change. And, and then when we go back to our dashboard, um, and look at our translations, go to pages. We'll see now we have our Spanish title of this feature page is, is called test. And, um, and I, you know, of course I didn't edit any of the widgets, but the, the important thing to, to recognize there is maybe the most straightforward thing is just to provide translations of each, all the text that's in each widget, but you can also, you're free to add new widgets, delete widgets and so on. So, um, it might not be uh, sort of the, the ordinary use case for a curator to uh, sort of change the widgets and the way they're displayed on the, the English versus Spanish uh, feature page, but that is possible um, and may have some value in, in certain use cases. So uh, just a couple of quick other things to note here. Um, so when I'm ready to publish, when I fully translate this page, for example, I can you know, click it save my changes and it will be available in Spanish. Um, I can delete it 
um, if I want, if I decide I don't want to offer that page in Spanish any longer. And then there's this recreate um, button, which is um, basically what that does is it, it, it does the delete and create steps combined. So if I've decided that I, I started on this translation, but in the meantime, one of our other curators made a lot of changes to this feature page in English. And it would be rather than trying to, you know, catch up with all the changes that they, they made, it might be easier for me to just start over. You can do recreate and it will just make a fresh copy of the English page and uh, you can start your uh, Spanish translation from that one. Um, so this is sort of generically how uh, the curator would translate all of their, their, uh, their exhibit content. So now I want to go to, to the Mario Pachi exhibit, which is the one I mentioned earlier um, that the translator was, uh, the curator rather, was very concerned about having the site accessible in Chinese. Um, and so uh, that curator actually provided both English and Chinese on all these, these feature pages originally um, when we didn't have the multilingual feature. And there's quite a lot of content on this site, as you can see here. Um, and, but once we've added the, the, the multilingual feature, then um, we were able to, now let's go to the dashboard and show you the translation part here. So um, again, just to make really clear, we wanted to have Chinese for this language, this exhibit. So we've added Chinese. Then we went to translations and Chinese is the language we're working with. And so these are the tabs where we provide translations for all the, the fields. And so um, what Kathy did recently is, is she went through and um, did a lot of copying and pasting and deleting to, to pull out all of the Chinese content that the curator had originally added before we had the multilingual feature and then put it into these fields so that um, they can serve as the, the Chinese version. So, You'll see here, these are the main menu items that are, these are the Chinese values for those strings, uh, the metadata fields um, for all the fields that we use. So we know a lot of these fields we don't use in this exhibit. Um, so there's no point in providing translations for those. Um, you know, here I didn't, I didn't explain it before, but when you actually put a value in here, we put a little checkbox here. So it's a little bit easier for the curator or translator to kind of see which ones they've already worked on and that, um, that relates to these little numbers in the, each tab. So in this case, it's 15 out of 50. So that means we've completed 15 fields out of a total of 50 fields. So this is just a way for the, the curator to kind of see at a glance um, which, which tabs they might need to do a lot more work on. Um, and so here are the, the fields, the search fields, and then the facet fields. So this is important. We'll look at that in a second. Um, but all the facets we know we're using, there are Chinese translations for those labels. Uh, this uh, exhibit has quite a few browse categories. Um, so those are provided in Chinese and then the pages. So this is now a more, much more realistic example of the pages uh, index where uh, these are all our feature pages. Um, and you can see they have Chinese titles and um, let's, uh, Go in here and edit one, and you'll see that, that um, this is where you know Kathy had to go and, and pull out all the original Chinese from the dual language pages and uh, add that back into all the widgets here. So um, this is what the feature a feature page looks like after editing and um, adding the content in the specific uh, language. So. Um, the end result of all this is once all this work is done, we have all our feature pages translated, we publish them, and we make sure that the, you know, we think we're ready to go. So we go and flip the switch, make the Chinese language uh, public, and then we can um, uh, go and look at what the, the user will see. So once any language is, uh, other than English, is made public, then the end users will see this um, locale switcher. So in this case, we made Chinese public. So we have the Chinese locale available. And as soon as we uh, change that, now the user can view the entire site in Chinese. And so really quickly, you know, just point out, you know, 
These are the main menu items that have been changed. This is the feature curated features pull down, and you'll see the all the page titles uh, from the Chinese version of uh, those feature pages are shown here. Um, the uh, browse categories, I believe. Yes. So these are the browse categories. You mentioned. You might recall I mentioned earlier that the word items is always shown here. Um, and we don't get that from Blacklight, so that's one of the things that comes from the Spotlight locale file. Um, and if we go to an about page, again, this was another heading that is not um, given to us from Blacklight, so this comes from the, the context header in the Chinese, came from the Chinese locale file that we added. But all this text, again, is coming from the work that the user, the, the curator did um, in the translations uh, page of the um, exhibit configuration. And so, um, you know, I think this is a really good example of a, a really fully translated um, uh, site um, where you see pretty much everything is um, in Chinese. Uh, even the, the feedback uh, form is available in Chinese. Um, and yeah, so I think I think that's um, what I wanted to cover here. So I think that's that's the end of the demo. Thank you, Gary. I'm going to stop recording now. <laughs>